There is nothing better than having both Radiant and Devour permanently active at the same time with one build. Now guys, I know it's been a while since I've made a build video, and Into the Light is coming if it's not already out by the time this video goes out, but today I've finally updated my main Void Warlock build. I have to say it's been a while since I've covered this build specifically because Solo and Strand just dominate the game these days, but that doesn't stop us from becoming a Void Devouring God with this newly updated Void Warlock build. Now Devour got both nerfed and buffed this season. Feed the Void, our Void Aspect, it's now going to grant more grenade energy per kill when Devour is active, making this build insanely good for crowd control, as well as just having that grenade for an extra source of DPS. We're going to get constant ability energy to get them back faster than normal, faster supers, infinite healing and volatile rounds with Void weapons and a lot more. And since this is a dedicated Void build that doesn't rely on seasonal mods this season, you can use it in any future season or episode that Destiny throws at you. Of course, don't expect the build to be a 100% efficient every time, because missing a grenade throw or just making some bad life choices will not be very forgiving and you will have to wait a little longer for those abilities to recharge. I actually took this build into the coil activity this season and yeah, um, all my teammates died and used all the res tokens, forcing me to painfully solo the last tier boss using this build. Just bear in mind that we capped 20 under the recommended power level with fire team scaling enabled, so yeah, they kinda didn't make that any easier by being dead. Regardless, push forward an extra two years, I finally end that boss and be on my way. I swear those bosses have far too much health anyway, and don't even give you enough ammo, but thank you Void Grenades. Now usually I'd start the video by demonstrating how the build works and how it flows nicely together, but we're not going to start there today. We're going to start with the loadout because this is where things kind of get interesting. You can decide to go down two paths with this build. On one side you've got the solar weapons and on the other side you've got the void ones. If you're going with the classic void route, then you've got things like the doom scout rifle, great for higher level content and long range. You've got the title and funnel web, great for all round ad clear and close range. Or you can go with exotics like graviton, collective obligation, and Lee Monarch. Lee Monarch will solve all your overload problems, which is my go-to for GMs. Collective is just fun in general and really flows well with the build because of the leeching effects with volatile targets. And Graviton is just amazing to use when you're bored with everything else. But my loadout preference with Void is a funnel web and a commemoration machine gun. But I would swap out the weapons depending on what I'm doing. So if I am in a GM, then I'd most likely use Lee Monarch if there's overloads running around, or anything else if there's other champions. On the solo side, my main go to loadout is a Callus Mini Tool and a Galley just because I absolutely love Callus Mini Tool for ad clearing in close range. But if you want to go all out this season only, then your S tier weapon choice would be a Polaris Lance or Sunshot. Sunshot is great for ad clearing and constant explosions going off everywhere, and Polaris Lance is just amazing this season, especially inside of higher end activities like GMs. The main reason for that is because it's just so strong for ad clear, and the constant precision hits will basically mean that you never have to reload. But also because of this season's artifact perk, the Flint Striker, rapid precision precision hits will make us radiant, which means we can use this as our anti-barrier weapon, and also use the ignition effects to stun unstoppables, and then all you need to do is deal with the overloads. But the fact that we got around 4 perks benefit in just one weapon is insane. And what's more insane is that you can get the radiant effect for extra DPS while using the void subclass. So infinite healing with devour, infinite grenades to keep that running, as well as getting the constant radiant effects too. You're literally unkillable. The loadout you do choose though should relate to the activity you're playing because the last thing you want to do is go into a GM with this build, call the build stupid because you died a hundred times, and then quit the game and uninstall Destiny. When actually the main reason probably wasn't the build, but it was instead that you couldn't stun that one overload champion chasing you around for 10 minutes. So make sure you run the right weapons for the right activity. Now the most simple way to explain how this build is going to be used in all types of content is you'd basically hold in charge your void grenade, then throw it at a group of ads to kill them. This will give you devour, spawn an orb to later use for additional benefits, and then you just run around killing everything with the loadout of your choice. All kills while Devourer is active will refresh your health and grant grenade energy, and I would then use those excess grenades on either ad clearing or for boss damage. And the reason I'd use it on a boss is because if that boss sits in that grenade long enough, you'll actually get that grenade straight back to use again. It's not always 100%, but a lot of the time you are able to throw grenades down a lot more than usual, and that is thanks to a few subclass fragments and armor mods. But before we dive deeper into that area, you should know that this build will only work the way it is if you are using Controverse Holds. 
So this is a must have because what Controverse does is allows you to get more grenade energy on hits from charged void grenades. Now you might think that this exotic is pointless since we are using the feed the void aspect to get devour when getting kills with a void ability which is then going to give us health and grenade energy on kills. The thing with this is that you need devour to be active right? But with Controverse holds you can get a quick boost to the initial energy and then top off the rest of that with the devour kills. But if you're not using Contra then you wouldn't be able to throw grenades on bosses or tougher adds where you're not getting the final blow to get that grenade energy back. So that's why I recommend using the Contra on this build. Two good alternatives though are Verity's Brow and Nezi. So if you haven't got Contra, it's not the end of the world, just use what you've got until you can grab one. In the subclass, make sure your two aspects are Feed the Void and Chaos Accelerant. Chaos Accelerant will just make the grenades a lot stronger and last longer, which is what you need for the faster grenades when using it on bosses. So I recommend using the Vortex Grenade so it can be out for a while to trigger that next energy boost from Contra after its few second cooldown from when you first threw that grenade. The Rift I'm using is just a healing one, since you might be running a solar weapon to get Radiant for the extra DPS, you won't really need the Empowering Rift, and regardless the healing one is just better all round for the times that you don't have Devour and need some quick HP. As for the Super, that's your choice, I usually go with the Slover Bomb, the slow one, and then for the Fragments, you want Echo of Undermining, so your Void Grenades weaken targets always handy and pairs well with certain void weapons like Collective Obligation if you do end up using that. But the second fragment we have is Echo of Expulsion, so those void ability final blows cause targets to go boom, great for better ad clear. Echo of Remnant so the grenade lasts longer. You do need this on because without it you might not trigger the second energy boost with Contra because the way that exotic works is you need to have that charged grenade hit the enemy to start that energy boost and then it has a short cooldown which I think is about 4 seconds before it can then be re-triggered and if that same grenade is causing damage to an enemy it will trigger it again and give you another grenade most of the time. The last fragment we have though is Echo of Instability so that grenade final blows grant our void weapons volatile rounds. Obviously if you're not using void weapons then you can replace this but a good alternative would be Echo of Reprisal for more super energy. As for mods, in the helmet you want two ashes to assets, this will just give you more super energy on grenade kills and it does help quite a lot so I do strongly recommend using them. Just make sure you have a cypher mod on as well to make orbs of power because we're going to make use of them too and the first use is with our two grenade kickstart mods in the arms by getting charge of light to then give us more grenade energy when using it. And most of the time those kills with grenades will generate the next orb with the firepower mod to then give us that charge of light back to then repeat and it just loops over and over like that. But moving on, in the chest you want your damage resist mods, legs you want your two grenade cooldown mods and a scavenger mod, then in the class you just want to have more cooldown mods focused on getting the grenade back quicker. And you might think this is a bit overkill with a grenade recharge rate, but trust me, when you're throwing them down 24-7 you're gonna need it. And besides, it just helps for those times where you accidentally mess up and waste your grenade. Now for your stat focus, you want to prioritise resilience, recovery and discipline, so if you can get these three stats to 100 as your triple 100 stat build, then that will be your best ideal setup for your Void Warlock build inside of Destiny 2 Season of the Wish right now. Of course, you can use the Seasonal Artifact mods or perks to make this build even better like I mentioned before by using things like the Polaris Lance and Radiant, but this will only be beneficial for this season up until June, which is when we get a whole new artifact, but definitely a good season still to use this build. Here is a quick reminder of the mods that we're using with this build if you want to copy them, but down below I will also have a dim link available as usual, so you can just copy the build through that if you prefer. This is by far one of the best Warlock Void builds right now to use in Destiny 2 this year, and it's 100% worth having as one of your top 10 loadout slots, especially to take forward for next season. But guys, that's all I have for today, so be sure to give this build a try, and as always, check out the playlist down below for more top builds like this, as I do cover builds regularly every season. And until the next one, have a good one and I'll see you soon. Peace out guys.